Hey, hey YouTube, my name is Heather, and if you're new here, this is my channel, Mama in Motion. I am on a weight loss journey to lose 100 pounds post hysterectomy, which occurred back in October of 2021. I decided to start my new weight loss journey on June 1st of 2022, and since then, I have lost 20 pounds, and uh, this is just my weekly weigh-in for this week with um, some progress pics and also my new measurements because I haven't shared my measurements in two weeks. But before we get to my weekly weigh-in, I wanted to go over a few other things and just share some things with you that have been going on in my life. First off, I tried some beet juice and so I wanted to go over my experience with that. Secondly, I made a delicious dessert for my 37th birthday and I wanted to share that uh, recipe and experience with you. I made a healthy version of a pumpkin tiramisu and it was so delicious, like oh my gosh, it was bomb. So I really enjoyed that. And then after that, I wanted to talk about my two mile per day walking challenge that I'm doing and how I went ahead and restarted it. And today is day five of my challenge. I went through a bit of an emotional like moment while I was on my exercise bike a few days ago and I just wanted to share that with you. Um, so I thought that that might be of interest to somebody. Uh, so we'll go over that too. Um, basically what had happened was I was thinking about my sister's wedding which happened two years ago I was at like my heaviest weight I don't even know how much I weighed my dress I was a size 22 so we're just going to talk about how it felt to be the heaviest person there and how it felt to uh, take photographs so I just wanted to talk about that with you guys a little bit and after that we will dive right into the weekly weigh in progress uh, but first, before we get to any of that, I did want to ask you guys a question. Um, I don't know if you've ever been asked this in a video, <laughs> but I would love your feedback on this. Okay, so I have progress photos with just my sports bra on and then, you know, pants and no shirt on covering my stomach. And so I was just curious if that was important to you guys to see that kind of progress because I don't know if you noticed, but I like to take pictures with my shirt on. I'm more comfortable wearing my shirt, but I do have the other photos for personal use. I was thinking that when I get farther along in my weight loss progress and I've started losing weight, um, that I might feel more comfortable with sharing those photos because it'll be like, distant Heather, past Heather. Like right now, like that was just 20 pounds ago. That that was a few months ago that I took the pictures where my belly was really a lot larger and hanging out and I just, I still feel really uncomfortable um, sharing them or thinking about sharing them really. And the only person that's really seen them is my husband. Um, so I was just curious if that's important to you, if you really like to see what the stomach looks like as the weight loss is progressing as opposed to seeing you know a shirt on covering everything um, i know you can still see stuff shrinking down but you can't really see all the details of it and i took the pictures with my belly hanging down over my pants so there's no like oh what does her stomach look like under her pants it's it's all there for you to see and for you to see if you really want to I guess so if I get enough like curiosity about it then maybe I'll share um, just know that I have several scars on my stomach I've had four surgeries on my abdomen and uh, I have a lot of stretch marks and my stomach is just not very attractive to me so I feel very self-conscious about it and it's really hard to consider sharing it but I am willing to if somebody like really wants to see it um, because I know I really enjoy seeing pictures like that from the people that I follow who are going through their weight loss journey and I like seeing how their body is changing. Um, I think it's really fascinating. So I'm just curious if anybody else out there is like me. So please feel free to share that in the comments with me and just let me know if that if you would like to see bare belly pictures from me specifically to share with you because I have lost 20 pounds and I also have pictures of me um, with my stomach just sitting normal and not sitting normal but resting in a normal position and then pictures of me sucking in my gut so I think that's really interesting too. I don't think people really share those kind of photos so there's something that I was interested in seeing for myself 
um, that kind of progress. So just share with me if you're interested in seeing it, okay? That'd be cool. <laughs> if you made it this far, let's go ahead and start with my um, experience with trying beet juice for the first time. Here we go. Hey, hey guys. Um, so today is my birthday and my lovely friend and neighbor uh, that lives right across the alley from me brought me some organic beet, carrot, and orange juice for me to drink since I'm having some issues with my liver. Um, I've never tried beets. <laughs> I am 37 years old and I don't know what a beet tastes like. I love carrots and I love carrot juice. I do not like orange juice, but I am willing to try this all together and see how it tastes. I'm really curious. So I'm gonna try just a little bit in my glass here and see if I like it. And then if I do like it, I'm gonna drink a cup of it every day. So we're gonna try some beet carrot and orange juice and uh see how it is so I'm gonna shake it up <laughs> i really hope i like it i want to like it smell it wow um <laughs> it didn't, didn't smell the way i was expecting okay <laughs> i'm nervous <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna try to drink a little bit of it. So here we've got some. It is very earthy, very, very earthy. I mean, she told me that beets were earthy, but I was not expecting this. I don't know if I wanna like just drink it and try it or just shoot it like a shot and gulp it all back in one go. I should probably have my water ready. Dun dun just in case I don't like it. All right, I'm gonna just shoot it back, I think. No, I'm not gonna shoot it back. I'm gonna try it. Wow, okay. Um, <laughs> that is something else. I'm not a big fan of it, but I mean, if it helps with my liver and my body and my horrible acne issues I'm having right now, then because I know the acne is just a symptom of what's going on with my liver. Um, so maybe it could help, you know, detox my liver some. <laughs> this is me deciding if I want to drink more. Yeah, I'm gonna try to drink some more. I'm gonna put a half a cup in here into my glass and I'm gonna drink it. I think my husband just got back from his walk. Why does half a cup seem like so much? I think that's all I'm going to be able to do for today is a half a cup. So that's what we're going to go with. And I'm going to chug it down. Here we go. The reason it tastes like fake crab with a dip that I used to have when I was a little girl with my mom. Like imitation crab with that dipping sauce. That's what I'm taking, tasting in the back of my mouth. So anyways, that's my experience with the beet juice. So yeah, thanks for watching. All right, and now that you saw me try the beet juice, let's get into something more yummy. And I will show you how I made the healthy version of a pumpkin tiramisu. It was super good, so here we go. Mm -hmm. 
Let's start with the ingredients. We need dark chocolate, ricotta cheese, Greek yogurt, pumpkin puree, a sweetener like stevia, madeleine cookies or lady fingers, strong coffee, and pumpkin spice. Here is how to make your own pumpkin spice if you don't have it already in your cupboard. So you start off with three tablespoons of ground cinnamon and you put it into your mixing dish. Please note that you will see me put in nine teaspoons to equal the three tablespoons of cinnamon. And then next we are going to put in two teaspoons of ground ginger. Up next is two teaspoons of ground nutmeg. Next we are going to put in one and a half teaspoon of ground allspice. I used a quarter teaspoon so that it would fit into my jar so you are going to see me using quite a few scoops to make up the one and a half teaspoons. The final ingredient is one and a half teaspoons of ground cloves and then you mix your spices together and voila you have a pumpkin spice mix. Now it's time to squeeze some cheese. So I learned that you need dry ricotta cheese which means that you have to squeeze the liquid out. So I went ahead and put a strainer over a bowl. I lined the strainer with some coffee filters. I slapped the ricotta cheese down in the middle. I put more coffee filters on top and I pressed the liquid out. It was not enough so my husband came in and he put the ball of cheese inside a dish towel and just squeezed and squeezed it until it was a lot drier than it was. Time to make the pumpkin filling. I busted out my blender and I went ahead and loaded it with the dried ricotta cheese which still did have some water but not nearly as much. And then I went ahead and put in one cup of pureed pumpkin. Followed by one cup of plain Greek yogurt. And then we go ahead and put in our sweetener. I used a stevia granulated sweetener. It is a half cup. And I actually ended up putting in another quarter of a cup toward the end because it just wasn't sweet enough for my liking. After that, we will go ahead and put two teaspoons in of the pumpkin spice that I made. And then we go ahead and just blend it until it's smooth and creamy. I actually blended it a little extra long so that it would get a little more fluffy. And I feel like that made a big difference because when I first tried it, it really wasn't very fluffy. It still had that thick ricotta texture, but as I blended it longer, it got fluffier and fluffier. Here is where I add in that extra quarter cup of stevia and then I also added in another teaspoon of the pumpkin spice because I just didn't find it to be, um, I don't know, spicy enough. Like it was lacking some flavor whenever I tasted it. So I just added a little bit of extra goodness to it to make it extra yummy.
Now it's time for the best part, time to dip the lady fingers. Of course, my lady fingers are actually Madeline's. My grocery store didn't have lady fingers, so I just settled for these. I don't really know the difference between the two as I don't eat either of these. I do eat tiramisu though. Um, so I made a strong coffee and then I let it set to room temperature and that was me trying a cookie. It was quite tasty. So I got them all set up and then I realized I forgot to prepare my dark chocolate shards. So I went ahead and got that ready. So I quickly got my chocolate together and I pulled it out of the package and broke it in half and started grating it on my cheese grater and I found that did not work very well and then I broke the chocolate and I almost cut my fingers on the cheese grater so I was like this is not a safe idea and uh, so I just went ahead and went with a cutting board and knife and I just chopped up the chocolate. Okay, back to dipping the cookies and layering the tiramisu. So I'm getting everything organized so that I can start soaking my cookies in the coffee. I only soaked them for about 20 seconds and then I pulled them out and they were nice and mushy, uh, but not so mushy that they couldn't be handled and were falling apart. With the cookies in place, I was able to start dishing up the pumpkin filling, which I just put a nice thin layer over the cookies, and then I sprinkled dark chocolate over that layer, and then once that layer was ready, I repeated the process and did a layer of soaked cookies, a layer of pumpkin, a layer of chocolate, followed by the third layer, which was also a layer of cookies, a layer of pumpkin filling, and then the final layer of chocolate. And then I chilled that in the fridge for four hours. The recipe calls for a minimum of two hours. Oh, and the recipe will be linked down in the description along with the recipe for the pumpkin spice. Um, so if you ever are in a pinch and you don't have pumpkin spice, but you have a lot of spices in your cupboard, you can probably make it with the five simple ingredients that I used. And just like that, my dessert was ready for my birthday. It turned out glorious. It was so good and so smooth. Uh, the ricotta is definitely noticeable and it just doesn't have the same creamy texture as traditional tiramisu, but the uh, texture of the cookies is phenomenal and turned out so good and the flavors are really on point. Chef's kiss, mwah. Now that you made it through the pumpkin tiramisu part, I hope that you enjoyed it and that it looked really tasty for you because it was a very good treat and I actually overindulged in it quite a bit. <laughs> I had definitely more than one serving on my birthday even though I really was adamant to only have one but I just couldn't stop eating it and I was like man but I don't know at least it didn't have like real sugar in it and it was stevia so it didn't make my stomach cramp up and feel really crappy um, and I didn't get you know 
diarrhea from it. But even though I did eat too much, I didn't binge on it. I just overindulged in it. So I'm not really too mad about it. It was my birthday and we have to celebrate a little, right? And I hope that you enjoyed watching it. It was really tasty to eat and everything was really good about it. Even though it was not as good as making it with the traditional ingredients. The texture wasn't quite the same, but it still flavor was great spot on. I'm really glad that I added the extra ingredients to help it uh, taste even better than it would have had I not added the extra pumpkin spice ingredients and the extra stevia which I needed to kind of cover up that Greek yogurt taste because it's such a sour tart taste and it just didn't really complement everything that was going on with the pumpkin uh, mousse like the so pumpkin. Now that we film. talked about that we can go ahead and talk about how my two mile walking challenge is going. Um, so I have a lot of B footage, you know, of it going on, but um, I don't really want to share it all because I want to share the challenge as a whole in like one video or in pieces in like a video series. So I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet. I don't want to share too much of the video footage here with you guys um, in this video. Uh, but what did happen was one of the days that I started working out, I was on my exercise bike, right where I'm sitting right now, and I was actually staring across the room. I have this picture hanging up, and it is me in the bridal party with my sister, um, well, part of the bridal party, and I'm like covered. Like everybody's standing there, and they're like turned sideways, and then they're like dominoes, you know, there's like a little space between them so you can see their full body but you would like scan over to me and then like there's someone in front of me blocking half my body or like a quarter of my body and there's someone on the other side blocking a quarter of my body because I am the biggest person in the picture and I believe that the photographer wanted to make me appear smaller um <laughs> And it just like lit a fire in me to exercise harder. Like all of a sudden I was like, my speed went up on my bike. Like I was like racing through it and I got three and a half miles in on my bike, even though I had already walked a mile outside. So I went four and a half miles a day, which was just insane to me. So I don't know. It was just it just really bothered me that I was like the fattest person there dealing with the self-consciousness of it, being a size 22 in my bridal dress, um, my bridesmaid's dress, excuse me, and just, you know, living the experience as like being the heaviest person there was kind of a crappy, crappy thing. But I mean, I pushed through it and everything and it, it didn't like really bother me so much that I couldn't go through with the day and do all of my duties as my sister's maid of honor like I still gave my speech and stood up in front of everyone and gave my sister a speech um, at her reception um, so I didn't let the fact that I felt really self-conscious uh, hold me back that day I really enjoyed myself and I went and I danced and I had fun and um, I just you know let loose like there was no alcohol at her wedding but we definitely had a good time together and it was really fun so even though I have these mixed feelings about my experience with it because of what was going on inside my own head because of the size of my body I still have really good memories of the day um, it's just that in this in this particular instance, I was looking at the picture realizing that I was positioned differently in the photos than everyone else. And I think it's like that for like all of the photos if I look at them. So I just, it was, it was an experience to think about, you know, about someone purposefully putting people in front of you to block part of your body to make you appear smaller so that you fit in with the other people around you and I don't know it just didn't sit right with me but it encouraged me to like push harder while I was exercising so that was a bonus and now every time I look at the photo that's like all I can think about but it's only been a few days since I thought about it so I think it'll go away in time and I don't really want to focus on it I don't want it to be at the forefront of my mind every time I think about my sister's wedding because that's just crappy I want to think about my sister 
and how awesome her wedding was and what a great experience it was to travel across the country from Washington State to Virginia to be in her wedding. So overall, it was a really great experience. Um, Okay. All right, so now that I talked about all of that, we can finally get into the weigh-in, which is maybe what you're here for. So let's get into it. So this week, I weighed in at 226.4 pounds. Uh, last week, I weighed in at 226.6 pounds. So I lost 0.2 pounds, which puts me at exactly 20 pounds lost. So I'm glad that I went down in weight and didn't go up. Um, but I, like I said last week, I was already sitting right around the 20 pound mark. And so I was, I wasn't bothered that it went up 0.2. Um, I wish that it had gone down a little more. It, it like teetered on the, you know, 226.1 to 226.4. So it could have gone down a little, you know, a little more and I would have been like, woo, but it didn't, but I am totally fine with that. I'm very happy to be 20 pounds down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just share some photos of what I look like uh, from June 1st to now. And you can see my belly and you can see the differences there. And uh, I also took my measurements and I just wanted to go over that with you. I had small changes in two spots. So around my rib cage, I lost half an inch. And around my belly button area and my love handles, I also lost half an inch. So over the last two weeks, even though my weight has been like literally pretty much the same from two weeks ago to today, I have lost just half an inch in two good areas to lose weight. So I are not weight, but to lose the inches. So I'm really happy about that. And I have no complaints. Um, I would rather be 20 pounds down today and you know, than be where I was and probably heavier. <laughs> So I think I would definitely be more than 246 pounds right now had I not started losing the weight. And I would still be in a lot of pain and achy and my joints hurting and swollen feet and calves and ankles. And um, there were just a lot of really negative things. I also didn't have like any energy at all whenever I wasn't uh, exercising and not eating well really depletes the energy as well. So. Anyways, I am just super stoked that I'm 20 pounds down. So thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed my video. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it. It really helps support my channel. And uh, I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Bye.